Hey, what's up guys? So it's 2023 now, and where the heck is Thea? It was first announced at SEMA way back in 2019, and it sounded amazing. It relied on artificial intelligence and utilized machine learning. It could much more accurately identify different types of radar, uh, completely filter out BSMs, and they were even showing it able to classify and identify different types of continuous wave police radar, which is much more challenging than classifying different types of blind spot radar. And if they could do that, especially in the real world and not just on the bench, in the lab, uh, well, filtering out BSMs should be trivial. Rodenso has also released some videos along the way showing the development process as they're building Thea. However, due to all the supply chain issues, Rodenso says that they can't get the parts to build it, specifically the Spartan 7 FPGA. Now, some chips are harder than others to get, but if you look at this specific chip, it's currently showing a 44-week lead time <laughs> to get some in the first place. And practically speaking, over the past couple years, it seems like it's kind of been backordered indefinitely. Now, Rodenso certainly could redesign Thea to use different parts and different components, which would take time, but hey, if you can't get the parts, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, I've seen some comments from the Intel CEO saying that he expects the chip shortage to last through 2024. Xilinx, the company that manufactures that FPGA, has been acquired by AMD, and so now there's a lot of speculation on what that means for the future development of these chips, and especially availability for smaller companies like Redenso. And so at this point, we're all sitting here wondering, like, when the heck is this thing coming? Is it still actually coming? You know, Redenso is no longer providing any updates, they no longer provide an ETA for it, and they just say if you want some information, well, sign up for the mailing list on their website and you'll be the first to know uh, when there's new information to share. And since then, they've basically gone silent. The last video about Thea on their YouTube channel was posted two years ago. And so just like you guys, I've been sitting here wondering like, okay, now what? Is Thea still in development? Is it still actually planned for release? Like I understand what Rodenso's saying, but they've gone completely silent here. We're all wondering like, okay, really what's going on now? You know, um, I see comments all the time in the videos asking about Thea. And in fact, uh, in the live streams, it's almost kind of become a game. Like when we see people in the chat, you know, uh, asking, hey, Vortex, where's Thea? Or what's the latest news on Thea? It's like, another Thea question, take a drink. Like, it's become a thing, and it's been this way now for a couple of years. There hasn't been any new information publicly released for us to discuss. And so I know at this point, you guys have seen the videos about Thea, you know all about it. If you haven't seen videos kind of explaining it and whatnot, I've got some videos I'll link to down in the video description, you can check it out. Uh, in this particular video, I wanna talk about two different things. Number one, where the heck is this thing? And number two, What's with the lack of communication from Redenso? Now, when it comes to delays in terms of development or manufacturing, I get it. Stuff like this happens in many different companies, like uh, Tesla, for example. Their Cybertruck has been delayed for years now. Fortunately, though, at least they're still providing some updates in terms of uh, development and manufacturing, even if that doesn't wind up going fully to plan. Uh, another good example that comes to mind is Apple with AirPower. Do you guys remember that? That was a wireless charger that they were developing that could charge three devices simultaneously, including an iPhone, an Apple Watch, and your AirPods all on one charger. Now it was announced back in 2017 and Apple said that they were gonna launch it in 2018. However, they were having some issues on the uh, engineering side, uh, especially when it came to thermal issues. Uh, and so they weren't actually able to get it uh, designed to meet their standards and so they wound up discontinuing it uh, in 2019. Kind of a bummer, but at least they kept us posted. And even here on this channel with my videos, Sometimes it takes me way longer than expected to do certain tests or reviews or videos or whatever, or sometimes I'm just not able to get to them at all. Life happens, stuff comes up, it stinks, but that's real life, you know? It happens, I get it. And for Renzo, I'm sure this has to be very frustrating for them too, right? They're trying to do something revolutionary and brand new, something much more than taking an existing detector and adding Bluetooth and Wi-Fi or an LNA to give it longer range. They're doing something, well, actually revolutionary and different, both on the development side and as far as what the detector should be able to achieve. And they said they wanted to announce it early before it was ready because it was so different and they wanted to take the time uh, to educate people in terms of how this works, why it's different than the competition, etc. Then COVID happened. They weren't expecting that. None of us were. Threw a wrench into everything and now here we are. So now the question is like, okay, well, now what? And while I understand that they don't know when they're going to get the parts and be able to build it and all that kind of stuff, the longer they stay silent about all this kind of stuff, I think the worse that it gets, the more people get frustrated and angry and disappointed. Uh, I've been seeing for a while now, you guys I'm sure have been seeing it too, all the uh, people saying like, hey, Thea, man, that was just vaporware. Like, look up the definition of vaporware. According to the Oxford Dictionary, uh, vaporware is a piece of software or other computer product that's been advertised but is not available to buy yet, either because it's only an idea or because it's still being written or designed. Now, according to that definition, anything that's announced before it's finished is technically considered vaporware, and I don't think that's what people have in mind. In the Merriam-Webster dictionary, uh, they define vaporware as a computer-related product 
that's been widely advertised but has not and may never become available. And they also mentioned that sometimes there can be unforeseen glitches that occasionally result in the marketing of products that ultimately never see the light of day. And this, I think, is really what people are getting at. And so the question now is like, okay, will Thea ever come out? I mean, on one hand, again, I understand Redenso not having a good answer on when it's going to come out due to part issues or whatever is going on on their end. Uh, and so they don't have a good answer and they just said, we don't know. And that's that. I get that. At the same time, though, when they go from providing so much information up front and videos, the development process and all that, to being totally silent about it, and as much as any of us would want to give them the benefit of the doubt, if they provide no updates for years, what do you expect, you know? And the longer they go with providing no answers at all about anything, not just availability, but anything, the worse that it gets. And so the inevitable question here is like, okay, is it still in development? What's the latest status of it? What's been going on with Thea? You know, can we really, really expect this uh, to happen? You know, I think these are fair questions. They're reasonable questions. Now, I'm not trying to use my platform here to force their hand or twist their arm or anything. Um, what they choose to do or not do, it's their business, their choice, their decision. But yeah, I definitely want to express my frustration here and disappointment with how everything has been going. And I really do hope that at some point they give us some update, something, <laughs> right, to go off of here. Uh, it's like, okay, what have you guys been up to for the past couple of years with the, uh, you know, you haven't been able to get the parts. Have you continued doing development? By the time this thing launches, I'm expecting it to be amazing. You've had years <laughs> uh, to work through it and design and improve and hopefully fix some of the initial launch bugs and whatnot that we see with new products. Like I expect it to be amazing now when it launches. Uh, if you can't, let's say, get the parts or development installed, what about other things? Like you've got uh, the Redenso DS1, for example, this has an Android app, but we're still waiting on the iPhone app. Well, you could develop that and Thea is supposed to use the same app here that the DS1 uses. So by the time Thea launches, well, you have the iPhone app ready to go as well, not just the Android app. So you could be working on that. And so again, while I'm really glad to see them working on something revolutionary and new and really trying to do something different uh, and better than how other companies have been approaching it, communication is critical here, like a minimal <laughs> amount of communication and not necessarily just going silent here for years. Again, I understand not wanting to provide availability updates when you don't know anything. I get the issues of not wanting to share what you've been working on with the competition because then they get a head start before you're able to release it. Like I get all that stuff, but like, come on. Hopefully soon they're able to share some information publicly as far as what they've been up to the past couple years and kind of what we can expect moving forward, what the status is, what kind of development they've been doing, something, you know? I think this whole Thea thing is a perfect example of uh, what can happen when we see a new product announced at a trade show or on a company's website or whatever that's still in development, which is great. I love seeing that kind of stuff. I know people love leaks. We love uh, FCC releases, all that kind of stuff, seeing what's to come. You know, that's all well and good, but like, you definitely have to take it with a grain of salt uh, until we actually have the thing in our hands. You know, there can be delays in terms of development or parts acquisition or manufacturing or whatever it is. And so who knows what's actually going to come in the future, you know? Uh, or even if we get something on hand, we get a new detector, uh, but maybe it launches and we're like, okay, maybe the next firmware update is going to add some features or there's some initial issues and those bugs have to be fixed. Maybe that update will come. Maybe it'll take forever for whatever reason. Maybe there's some bugs that they're going to have issues fixing or whatever the case is. And so whenever we get something on hand, I think a good rule of thumb is like, I've talked about this before, when you buy something, buy it based on what it's like today, what you have in your hands today, not based on the promise of a future firmware update that may or may not come. Right? And even if it does come, what if there's bugs and other issues and stuff? Like That's one of the reasons why manufacturers now a lot of times don't even like to release uh, expected ETAs for when a new firmware update is going to come. The running joke in the industry for that is it'll be available in two weeks. Right? Two weeks a new update comes. Maybe it will. Maybe they find some issues. Maybe they introduce more bugs. Maybe it doesn't fully fix the bugs. Whatever happens, the engineers have to keep working on it and they miss their two-week deadline. And so yeah, two weeks it'll be available. But even new products like this, even more so. More stuff can happen. And over the years, I've heard the question many times of people saying, hey, is Thea right around the corner? Should I wait and hold off on buying a detector? Because uh, I want to get Thea. It sounds awesome, right? And honestly, I never really know what to say as far as when the thing is going to come out. Like, even if they tell me, you know, hey, we got this thing ready. We're about to launch and stuff. I've seen many times from even other manufacturers where whatever happens, things get pushed back and delayed for so many different reasons that they don't expect. Like, it, it's really a thing. And so regardless of what's going on, I think it's always smart to just if you want to buy something and you need something today, buy something. There's a lot of great options for great detectors. Pick one up, whatever it is, whatever brand, um, and put it on your windshield. It's going to protect you now. It'll serve you well, and it's going to be a great choice. When 
if Thea ever comes out, cool, you can pick up Thea as well. Uh, and then, okay, fine, you've got a backup detector. Awesome, throw it in another car or whatever, or fine, sell it, get a bunch of your money back. Uh, one thing that I've found as somebody who has a lot of detectors and tries a lot is I find trying a lot of different detectors definitely gives me a much better appreciation for each individual detector to kind of appreciate the improvements and the benefits and the differences and the nuances of what each detector offers. I find there's a lot of benefits to actually trying a lot of detectors. And so even if you want to get something else while you're waiting for Thea, I think there's a lot of value in that. And then later if Thea comes out and you want to upgrade, cool, sell your other detector, whatever. You're going to actually wind up, I think, better off uh, having had the opportunity to try multiple different detectors, you know? And so, no, I mean, as I've been saying for years, like, don't wait for Thea. And I think that's been a smart <laughs> uh, decision because it's been delayed so long. But even if we know it's coming out in two weeks or whatever it is, like, I think there's a lot of value in trying different options and like buy something today that'll protect you now, you know? If you need a detector, definitely get something. And so, yeah, just like you guys, I wish Thea was already out. I wish I'd been running it on my windshield for the past two or three years or whatever it's been, you know? From my perspective as a reviewer, there's a lot of great radar detectors that are out there, but there's no detector that I found that I would feel comfortable enough just kind of universally recommending to everybody. Like everything has pros and cons, you know? There's nothing that doesn't have any big issue in my opinion that's like, okay, that really is something that needs to be worked on uh, and addressed. There's nothing where I feel super comfortable being like, yes, this is the best. This would be the best detector just without knowing anything about what the person needs, just go get this one, you know? Thea is kind of the promise of hopefully if it lives up to expectations and it's released, it could fulfill that role, but it remains to see seen, you know, if that is actually going to come to fruition or not. And even my role here as far as sharing all the Thea information, I mean, I love sharing cool new stuff that's in development uh, that companies are working on and companies are going to be hopefully, ideally one day releasing, you know? That's actually one of the cool things about trade shows that we get to see kind of new stuff in the works. It's great getting to watch technology evolve and companies do new things and see something that's genuinely new and different uh, compared to what we've had before. You know, that is definitely interesting and fun and I want to continue sharing uh, all the cool and interesting stuff that I'm finding uh, in this kind of radar detector, laser jammer, dash cam kind of niche here that we focus on in this channel, you know? But with anything when it comes to discussing new products, whether it's something announced at SEMA or we see a, a leak that's provided online or we see something with an FCC leak or whatever it is, all this stuff has to come with a caveat that it may get delayed, maybe stuff that we see in patents doesn't get implemented, maybe there's bugs at launch, maybe there's supply chain issues, maybe companies can't get the boxes to ship it, whatever happens, like, this kind of stuff, anything in the future, we, who knows what's going to happen realistically, and so yes, while it's awesome and fun to talk about kind of new stuff that's in the pipeline, and you guys are asking all the time, you know, when's the new thing coming out, is there anything coming out around the corner, when's a new update for this detector coming out, realistically, we don't have a crystal ball and none of us really know, and that's the fact. And whenever something does finally launch, that's the time when we're like, okay, cool, we've got it on hand, let's test it out, let's see, does it live up to expectations? Does it do everything that it advertises? Are there other bugs and issues that maybe we weren't expecting that we really need to know about? We need to see lots of people actually testing it to get a lot of different data points and different viewpoints going on here, you know? So we can definitely look at all the preview stuff and it's cool to see that, but like there's still a lot more to it uh, before we have like a good solid answer of like, okay, it's here, is it good, is it recommendable? all that kind of stuff. And so moving forward, I really hope that we get something from Redenso about this. Uh, despite the benefits of being silent and not giving information to your competitors and issues with not knowing when it's going to launch and supply, all that stuff, despite that, I do think it would be a good idea, my opinion, for them to share something. You know, give us some updates here. I love, as an engineer, as a nerd, like all the cool stuff that they've talked about in the past and shared in the development process, and I understand why they may not want to share it, but like going from one extreme to the other, something would be good, you know? Hopefully we get something cool as far as updates and some new uh, fun stuff to talk about, and I'll definitely keep you guys posted uh, when and if that happens. And so, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts <laughs> on the, uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are doing great, and I'll see you in the next one.